Today in the news, it looks like the RX 7000 series of GPUs based on the RDNA 3 architecture have some issues that, uh, you know, throw back to this little guy. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. So the RX 7000 series of GPUs based on the RDNA 3 architecture is in the news again. Now to explain fully what this news piece is about, we have to go back to RDNA 1 with the RX 5700 XT. You see, the 5700 XT brought in something called junction temperature, previously called the hotspot temperature on the uh, Radeon 7. That junction temperature is essentially the hottest spot on the die itself. And the 5700 XT made some headlines because AMD said that it was expected to run at 110 degrees Celsius and that it was absolutely normal. And while sure, 110 degrees Celsius for the hotspot is probably fine for the silicon, there were some issues with the wording AMD used. AMD said, and I quote, instead of setting a conservative worst case throttling temperature for the entire die, the Radeon 5700 series GPUs will continue to opportunistically and aggressively ramp clocks until any one of the many available sensors hit the hotspot or junction temperature of 110 degrees Celsius. Operating at up to 110 junction temperature during typical gaming use is expected and within spec. Now, many reporters took the uh, expected as being an issue simply because, well, if you had a good cooler on a 5700 XT, the junction temperature wouldn't be the limiting factor. It would actually be something else. RDNA 1 didn't have a target temperature, like for example, a Ryzen 7000 series CPU, which aims for, I believe it's 95 degrees Celsius. So it seems like AMD was trying to justify either this blower design or simply bad cooler design that might have happened with other companies. But that was in 2019, I guess it was fine, no GPUs caught on fire, wink wink NVIDIA. So then we had RDNA 2, and it had a slightly different and more niche problem, but it still relates to the RX 7000 series, so I also wanna talk about it. So cue the RX 6800 XT, or 6900 XT, really any of the first RDNA 2 GPUs that were released, the big boys. A couple of Reddit posts online have posted about about temperature issues with the uh, GPU when oriented in specific ways. Essentially, if the GPU was normally positioned horizontally, you had moderately good cooling. If it was vertical, like on a test bench, you had the best cooling solution. And if it was in any way rotated 90 degrees this way, so vertically and standing up, then the cooling was absolutely horrible with the T-junction temperature hitting 110 degrees Celsius. Keep in mind that was the hot spot, the whole GPU's average temperature was at 75 degrees Celsius for this particular Reddit user. Well, now it seems like history is repeating itself on the 7000 series. Let me just put this away. That's way too many GPUs for one person to have. These are not mine, by the way, I borrowed them. All right, so here we have it, the 7900 XTX. And apparently, it has the exact same issues. Reddit user Nero1338 posted his issues with his GPU reaching the 110 degree junction temperature. He says, as we know so far, quite many people have problems with the reference 7900 XTX cards reaching the 110 degrees Celsius junction temperatures. But his situation is quite different because while his GPU reaches the 110 degrees Celsius, the rest of the uh, variables are actually suffering because of it. He's at 100% fan speed and is still losing performance in games. Now, surely that is not normal, but AMD did say that the temperatures are within spec. Thankfully, uh, somebody from AMD reached out to him to try and resolve that after the first email with the uh, RMA team. My suspicion is pretty simple, and it seems like a lot of people over on Reddit figured it out. The cooler is just not making good contact with the GPU die. Some have gone as far as just repasting the GPU, and others just avoid the reference design to go with something beefier. And just by repasting, some people like Backfire Fox here got an insane result, going from 110 degrees Celsius on the hottest spot down to 76 degrees Celsius. He even added extra details like the fact that, well, the thermal paste application was a mess and even the quality of the thermal pads lacked a little bit. Now, his specific model is the power color reference design. So it still looks like this, but it's made by power color.
color. I don't know if other reference designs from, I don't know, Gigabyte, I don't know who else makes them, but if they also have that issue, then it might just be the actual cooler design, not the way that it was assembled together. But it's kind of crazy. You're buying a $1,000 GPU, $1,700 in my case, because I'm Canadian, and you're running into temperature walls that can be easily fixed with a little bit of thermal paste and a couple of thermal pads. It's crazy. But what are your thoughts on this? Are you getting the reference design and hoping that you get one that was assembled correctly? Or if you are in a market for one like this, then are you planning on getting a third party design instead? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, it's right here. To see the latest video right here. Just subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.